Hey, Falcon fans, welcome into today's look back on a BGSU classic. We are going back to March 20th of 2007, the second round of the NCAA tournament. The number seven seeded Bowling Green Falcons taking on the two seeded Vanderbilt Commodores. And we are joined today by both former players and former coaches for Bowling Green State University women's basketball. And before we get to the game, let's start out by Introducing ourselves to the players and coaches that are here. And Kate Doctor, how about you get us started with where you're at today and what's going on with your life? I am in Chicago and I am married and we now have two children. We actually had our child, uh, Reese and she. Um, and I am the head women's basketball coach at Loyola University of Chicago. Laura Boer, how about you? Uh, hi, yeah, I'm Laura Andrews now and also married with two twin girls. They are two and a half and uh, love that, love them. I am teaching second grade here uh, just south of Indianapolis in Indiana. Head coach Kurt Miller, how you doing? Hey, Brad, good to see you. Good to see everybody. Um, I transitioned out of the collegiate game in 2015 and into the WNBA. Since 2016, I've been the head coach of the Connecticut Sun, and we are currently in the stretch run of our 2021 season, where we currently sit in first place and uh, have five remaining regular season games left before the upcoming playoffs. Amber Flynn, as we see you on the move, where are you headed? Where are you, where are you at right now? Um, I am actually on my own green place, and I'm back living there, married, two kids. Um, I'm traveling now, so I apologize for the mask and loud noise, but uh, I'm on the plane headed back, but I wanted to see everybody and experience with everybody, so I just wanted to stop in and say hi. Allie Mann, your turn. And Allie, we don't have your mic. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Allie Mann, class of 2007. Um, I'm living in Chelsea, Michigan. We actually just uh, bought my grandfather's house about a year ago. So uh, moved in there right behind the high school here. I'm coaching high school basketball and uh, married with two kids. I've got a three-year-old and a five-week-old. So our house is uh, getting plenty of sleep and lots of rest. Lindsay Goldsberry, how you doing? Doing good, thanks. It's good to see everyone and um, class of 2009. And I'm currently living in Tip City, Ohio with my husband and three kids and one on the way. So we're busy as well. Not five weeks old, but we're getting there. So it's good to see everyone. Brandy Poole. Hi, everyone. It's good to see everybody's faces. Um, I am currently living in Connecticut. Spent five years down in West Texas at Lubbock and then joined Kurt up here with the Connecticut Sun and I'm loving it. Loving being reunited with him. And uh, yeah, we're in the grind of our season right now. So uh, five games and then into playoffs, sitting in first place. So enjoying it. I am still married. Got married after I left Bowling Green to Brent and uh, doing great. No kiddos over here, but two cats. And uh, we are uh, very happy. All's good. And still the all-time leader in block shots, Liz Honiger. Hey, Brad. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Great. Uh, yeah, Liz Honiger, um, new homeowner this summer. That's exciting. I'm engaged. I have no idea when I'm going to get married or when we're going to get married, but hopefully a date soon. And uh, I'm in Bloomington still entering my 10th year with IU Women's Basketball. And Megan Thorburn. Hi, guys. I'm Megan Thorburn, now Majewski. I'm living in Toledo, Ohio, believe it or not like bad place for Falcons to live. Um, married with two boys, six and three. Um, I work for an insurance company. I work with Allie Mann 
and happy to be here. Can't wait to watch this game. And Julie Gompers. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, now Julie Alexander. Um, I am living in Orlando, Florida now, uh, right outside in a, a place like a suburb called Mount Bird. Um, I am a full-time ER physician and I am happily married for four years to, of course, a boy from Ohio, um, but he did drag me down here. Um, and we have two children. My daughter's name is Ivy. She's two and 10 months. And I just had a baby, uh, he's six months old and his name is Davis. And they're uh, amazing. And we're just getting by day by day like everybody else and uh, pretty busy with work right now. But um, yeah, all is good, wonderful. So. Well, it is great to have everybody here on a Friday night to look back on this classic game, March 20th, 2007, second round of the NCAA tournament. Number two seeded Vanderbilt taking on our number seven seeded Bowling Green Falcons. Bowling Green coming in 30 and three, Vanderbilt coming in at 28 and five. And before we get right into the game, Kurt Miller, I want to ask you this coming off that win against Oklahoma State just 48 hours prior, coming in, how did you get the team to refocus and get ready for round two? You know, Brad, I think we were so excited to get by round one. Um, we knew um, how talented Oklahoma State was, but we had so much confidence with this group and have, you know, led up to this point. And it was kind of the monkey off our back in game one, went into this game as the underdogs, not a lot of people giving us much of a chance. And that's where we always thrived when people counted us out, um, underappreciated under, and disrespected us. So this game was easy, uh, you know, to get everybody up. Uh, we felt like we could compete and certainly felt like we could win and, and put together a good game plan. And as we all know, it all came together and we played a tremendous game. Laura Boer, I'll ask you this, that atmosphere at Ineed Lansing, just two and a half hours away from where you play your home games, the crowd definitely an advantage coming in. What was that like? That was, it was pretty much like a home game. I mean, there was orange everywhere when I can remember it and, and just having that support and um, all the noise was something that I will never forget and something that I don't like a feeling that I can't uh, duplicate anywhere else. And um, it was really was a one of a kind experience that I, that I won't forget. And Julie, can you remember the build up to that game? What it was like just preparing in that quick turnaround? Yeah, absolutely. I was, um, I was uh, just so proud of the girls and what they were going through and uh, their focus. And I was just excited to be a part of it is to be very honest. It was that exciting to just be there. So. And Liz coming off that win against Oklahoma state, you turn right into an sec program in Vanderbilt Bowling green coming into that game. Oh, and 11 all time against sec opponents. Was that in the back of your mind? No, I don't think I had a clue at that point in time, but we knew it was going to be a tough game. I think they had won the, their league that year, so we knew we had a big test ahead of us, but we were excited for the opportunity. And Brandy, looking at the opponent that Vanderbilt had seen just prior in Delaware State, Delaware State did not make it easy on Vanderbilt in that first round. What did you see from Delaware State of anything that you may have been able to use to your advantage in areas where you could be successful? Brad, I know this was my scout, and I'm really proud of that, but I, <laughs> I, what I remember about Delaware State was how awesome their band was before our game. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I just knew, I grew up, I grew up outside Nashville, so I had grown up um, as a young kid going to camps at Vanderbilt that I've always been a, you know, a fan of that program growing up near there, and so I was just excited to get to compete against somebody that I, you know, a team that I grew up watching and knew that they were super talented, and um, yeah, so good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Allie, I know this was close to home for Bowling Green Falcon women's basketball, but very close to home for you in Chelsea, Michigan. They're just about an hour away. Plenty of support there for the Falcons and, of course, yourself. Yeah, I mean, that that was the coolest thing was running out of that tunnel and just hearing the place erupt for us. And it really was like orange the whole way around. 
Um, I come from a, a big family, so it was, and they would have traveled anywhere, but it was easy for them to hop in the car and drive 45 minutes west uh, to the Breslin Center, which is somewhere that I was really familiar with playing, you know, growing up playing AAU tournaments there. Um, and then the, the thing that was the most surprising is running out of the tunnel after the game, you know, back into the locker room and people hanging over the tunnel saying, Allie, Allie. And it was like high school friends that I hadn't seen in four years or girls that I played AAU basketball with at, at 16 years old and old coaches. And it was just really cool uh, to be playing on, on a stage in front of familiar faces. And Kurt, you know very well during that time that when it comes to the SEC, a lot of the focus was Tennessee and Pat Summit and the success they were having year after year. But Vanderbilt was kind of one of those sleeper teams a little bit in the SEC under 50 year head coach Melanie Balcom coming in. How familiar were you with Melanie Balcom and the success of her program? Yeah, obviously, Melanie, um, you know, sharpened her teeth in the state of Ohio at Ashland and and Xavier. So very familiar through the recruiting trails, grew up in the profession at the same time as Melanie. She was regarded as a great X's and O's coach in the coaching circles. Um, and so, you know, someone we had great respect for, but we thought the style of play we matched up well with, um, obviously they had a really talented starting lineup, but they weren't real deep. So we thought if we could get some people to have an off night that we would have uh, great success. And as you see on the, on the screen, we had a great regular season and only a few losses and played against some of the best teams in the country in that non-conference season. So we had a lot of confidence that we could play against the best of the best. I know that the players really felt they could compete against anyone and rightfully so. Allie, was there a driving force looking at this matchup against Vanderbilt coming in saying, we're playing for Bowling Green women's basketball, but you missed out on recruiting a few of our players to be in a division of being a conference like the SEC? You know, I, I think at this point, it was it was really about just the run that we wanted to have. And that was a chip on our shoulder, I feel like, from the moment we stepped on campus at Bowling Green. And, and that was kind of the base of, of that chip. But that just grew over time. Um, and when we got to this game, the, the feeling was more like, let, like we're competitors and we've worked our tails off with a really veteran team, you know, it's such a core group, this senior class um, and, and all the way down that just really loved each other. And we didn't want this thing to end. So that, that was really where it was coming from. Like whatever we had, to, whatever it took to win the next game. And, and we felt that all the way through the tournament. And prior to the Oklahoma state game in the first round, you also saw, Notre Dame earlier in the season in a tough overtime game. You saw Duke uh, down in Cancun. Kate, how much did those games help prepare you for this matchup in the second round? Well, I think the intent in playing those teams was to prepare us to face mm -hmm. competition in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, while we fell short with both of those earlier in the season, um, you know, it provided us some perspective that we can compete on that stage and we really do belong. And, you know, to echo Allie, we proved our point with our record throughout the season. And once we got past that first game, it was about, you know, we want to keep this going as long as we possibly could. And, and we knew we belonged, um, but it was a matter of, you know, fighting through the, the critics or whomever else didn't think we were supposed to be there. We knew. Kate, uh, Kurt, what were some of the biggest challenges coming in against Vanderbilt with a team that had multiple 1000 point scores and, led by a player like Christina Wirth? Well, the starting lineup was just so talented, Brad. You know, obviously they had great size in the center. They had versatility with Worth. They had outstanding guard play. They had a defensive stopper that wasn't a great scorer. So they just had overall a really balanced, a really talented starting lineup that um, you looked at any one way and – there was a little bit of matchup concerns, but what we thought we could do is really spread them out in our ball screen offense at the time, our versatility with our post game and just the experience of that senior class that had played so many games together. And then again, it was just a freedom like these guys are sharing right now after getting that monkey off the back, winning an NCAA tournament game, getting by the first round, you know, everything felt like it was a bonus for us. We could play free, we could play as the underdog and have nothing to lose. And I just think it really propelled us. And then 
as we all mentioned, the crowd with so many Michigan players on the roster um, and Midwest players on the roster, it, it was just an unbelievable feeling with our crowd there. And Taylor, let's start to roll a little bit of the uh, game footage, looking at the crowd, plenty of orange in the stands inside the Breslin Center there at Michigan State. Vanderbilt, number two seed. Bowling Green, the number seven seed. Saw the bracket there for a quick moment. Fan support all around. Lindsey Goldsberry, for you, as a sophomore, what was that like? Uh, speechless. There you go. <laughs> a lot of it. Um, just being around the players, though, and um, just the, the intensity of how to play, how to play there and how to – get it done on the court. And like uh, Allie mentioned, I think we all, you know, we all loved each other. You know, we were a family on the court and also off the court. And it showed in how we played together and how we cared about each other. And then, like you said, with the fans there, I mean, that just brings, and like Laura said, that is a, like, I feel like a home, you know, home court because it's just, I mean, it's emotional now how, you know, it just brings back all those memories of what it was like that day. And as we'll start to get into the tip off here and look at some of the early action in this game. Emotional game coming into it right away. Look, few smiles there, but then all business once the game got going. Karn Horn, a quick start in that game, scored five of the first seven points. How about her aggressiveness, Kurt Miller? <laughs> Karn never lacked for confidence, that's for sure. So we <laughs> knew we could go to her early. There was any jitters, Karen wasn't going to have them. So um, she wasn't afraid to take big shots for us. Can we and talk Lindsay, about this defensive tip setup right now that we've got going on? Like, holy on cow, that. guys. Yeah. I mean, I believed in you, Ellie. I really yeah. did. <laughs> that help. Come out, get that first stop, come down the other end of the floor. Down. Kate, take us through that pull up, nothing but the bottom. Yeah, I think that's where I found the most success in my career is that 15 foot range. Uh, threes were not my thing. I had plenty of people around me to make those. So, you know, if I could keep people honest at 15 feet, I knew it would open up a lot of things for everybody else. So um, lots of jitters with that first one, but it certainly felt good to see it go through and not air ball. <laughs> and you're still the all-time leader in assists in Bowling Green women's basketball history. Have to note that as well. Lindsay, coming in for you teammates. in this game. Lindsay Goldsberry coming in to this game. You made an immediate impact off the bench coming in with a nice takeaway in that game and then leading to a bucket for Allie Mann at the other end. How did you feel coming into that game, your emotions, your mentality, and where you had to be successful? Well, uh, like I said, the team set me up for success. You know, I tried to do the little things that I could do, um, all the nitty gritty things, um, and make it happen. And I had great teammates around me to get the ball to, to go coach. Look at that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all right hey. <laughs> <laughs> we'll distract it. I thought coach was calling my name. <laughs> that is a really bad suit combination uh, for a big game. That was terrible. I mean, brown and orange, we struggled to find sideline clothes. Let's be real. <laughs> Yikes. Allie, you remember that reaction looking over to the bench after that turnover? Where I just threw it straight out of bounds to the sideline. Like, what? It was the, that's a freshman mistake right there. They didn't look at the bench after turnovers, Brad. <laughs> they kept it moving. I think that was the look I saw for four consecutive years. I don't think it was like any play in particular. I think that's just what it looked like. <laughs> Well, one of the fun matchups in this game, the battle of the Liz's, Liz Honiger versus Liz Sherwood. Liz Sherwood, having started her career at UConn. Liz Honiger coming in 5'11", Liz Sher Sherwood 6'4". What was that battle like, Liz? I thought she was like 6'8", not going to lie. No, I was exercise <laughs> center my whole career, so I was used to it. Although in the MAC, obviously, we didn't see as many big post players, but when we played the Dukes and – other uh, power five schools. Obviously I was always undersized. So I was used to it by then. I would say, There's but we always away. had her back. Like we knew we were undersized in that area, but we always felt like we were there to help her. Like no matter what, and half the time she probably didn't need our help, but we were there. Oh, I needed it. I needed it. For sure. <laughs> 
You were bailing me out because I'd let people blow by and then you block them. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I don't remember really? playing this much zone early. It's because I couldn't breathe. I was going to like, I was exhausted. I don't think we could play anything else. I thought we always played zone. Did we play much? Yeah, game? I did too, right? 22 <laughs> back in the 30, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Good memory. After that first time out, 10 6 lead. How were you feeling just getting, as, as Kurt talked about, that playing in four minute segments? How were you feeling after that start? We won one. <laughs> <laughs> That was the goal, right? When the first one. Absolutely. I, it probably helped, it, it helped us. Yeah, I it probably just reinforced what we felt like we belonged, you know. Um, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the game was like, okay, let's keep it consistent and not try and yeah. give it away. Yeah, I mean, we Her obviously always look comfortable out there that like we definitely knew what we were fighting for. It was, it didn't matter who was on the other side of the, the court. Mm -hmm. I would say coach Miller always taught us. It was like a game of runs. So you need to, whoever makes the biggest one run wins. Which is exactly how life is. It's just a matter of runs when, when a, when a very small portion, you know, a couple weeks at a time or something, you know, for a few hours, whatever. Yeah. I, I love that mentality. I still think about it. <laughs> I can't catch a win lately and at night. <laughs> okay, yeah, can you speak on in there down on Liz? Uh, battle of the Liz is right there for sure. Cool. Lost that one. <laughs> okay, can you speak on the quickness of the Vanderbilt guards and just how tiring it was? going up against three, four different guards throughout the night? Yeah, I think the quickness wasn't the issue. I think it was the length. I think all around, you know, any team that we faced that was at the power five level, we always struggled with their length. It wasn't the IQ issue. Um, occasionally it was the size, as you can see inside with Liz, but um, yeah, they just had so much length and it made it really difficult to be able to get the right passing angle or, you know, make entry passes into the post. And you really had to do a good job of creating space off the bounce. And that's why Karin found such good success because Karin was a huge guard um, for us. Both Karin and Thorburn, um, you know, huge on the wing. So, yeah, I, for me, that was something that was really difficult to, to handle early. I'm like freaking myself out every time I pass the ball across <laughs> side to side right now. It's the length. <laughs> the man's. Yeah. yeah. Shout out and man going crazy in the stands <laughs> after Ali hit that three. Looking at that pull up one more time, left <laughs> wing, Ali man. I love the three. The three was nice to me in this, uh, this NCAA tournament. Midway through 17, 12 lead. Offensive foul there? No. <laughs> I'm surprised. Amber was usually a master at picking up offensive fouls. So I'm surprised that's one that slipped away from her there. Was there a team that was similar at all during that season that compared to Vanderbilt the way they extended the floor and had their length? Brad, their size reminded us a little bit of Duke. Mm -hmm. You know, again, there's always these unintended consequences why Sherwood had a good stretch here. I think it really helped that she had a good game because it kept her in the game instead of Williams uh, in crucial times. Ultimately, we ended up scoring sometimes better with Liz on the floor. So 
it's sometimes funny how things work out that she got off to a good start against us, but ultimately maybe it helped us. And Amber Flynn throughout this game, the Mac sixth man of the year coming off the bench as she had done throughout her career, finished that game with a game high 19 points, beating off teammates passes, finding yourself right place, right time, and also creating our own offense. Yeah, I mean, we don't have any sort of success that season without Amber buying into that role and and coming in knowing how impactful she could be. And that was like the beauty of, of her coming off the bench. She was just such a spark. And then how do you counter that? Um, how do you really counter that three-headed monster with Liz, Allie, and Amber in the post? I mean, like, they're so very different in how they're able to score. And then Amber is just like, a, holy cow, it's a punch in the mouth because Amber was going to fight you. Um that was just awesome. Looking back to some of the highlights, Allie here in the first round game against Oklahoma State, you started to get your offense going in that second half, 12 points in that second half alone. What got you going? Um, I think ultimately it's it's just the will to win um, and being on that stage. And there's something about being in front of a crowd and having that energy just like pump onto the floor. And uh, for me personally, I, I loved I, I loved feeling a game out and um, and figuring out what I needed to do to be successful. If that was scoring, if that was passing, if that was setting good screens. I mean, our, our team was so balanced across the board that on, you know, in, it's not even on any given night, it's someone else's turn. It's just in, in any given moment, it was somebody else's turn. And, you know, the first half was more of, of feeling it out and getting teammates involved and that second half just opened up a little bit more and down the stretch. Um, I just like having the the ball in my hands. And obviously you saw that, that pass to Kate, great teammates that can, can finish and anywhere you pass it, you know, whether that's Kate cut into the hoop or Thorburn or Liz parked out on the uh, three point line. I mean, it's, it's going to be money. So it makes everyone's job easier when you can spread people out and just take what the defense has given you. A huge moment in that game as we just saw Christina worth picking up, her third personal foul, obviously coming in, she was the focus player for Vanderbilt and leading that team. How huge was it at that time for her to pick up that third personal foul? And was it part of the game plan to get her into foul trouble? You know, ultimately, Brad, she was uh, the versatility gives them versatility. More of game plan was to try to t attack Liz Sherwood off of that ball screen. And, and you saw that's what led to worst third foul there was we got around Sherwood in the ball screen defense and got to the second line defender, which then Christina fouled there. But that was all again, the chess match while Liz Sherwood was, uh, you know, a tough guard underneath. You see Liz just battling like crazy down there. Ultimately, she had to guard us at the other end in our versatility in our post game and our attacking guard. So it was that chess match that ultimately helped us and it helped Amber have such a big game against these centers. Kate, not happy with that call? That's, I don't think I've ever been happy the with the call. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's, that's norm. That's the norm. still react to that call the same way you do now as a coach? Yeah, except I probably have like a smarter quip to come at the official <laughs> with, you know, like I know a little bit more, so I can say a few things differently probably, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what I was upset about there to be real honest with you, but here we are. Liz Honiger. Hand in your face didn't matter there. I think that was like Mac Daddy or something. Do you guys remember that play? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you remember the name? Mac, Daddy. Mac Daddy. Mac Daddy. Bring it back. Bring the five off a stagger screen on the like from the baseline. It's Who does that? Wild. Hey, we got a three second call, guys. Good screen there by. Amber Flynn. Yep. That was Mac Thorburn had a good one down there too. Yeah. And Sherwood right back to work. 
yeah, I'll take the L on that one. Not quite enough ball pressure at the top of the key there. It's my fault. <laughs> Sorry, loser. It's all good. I'm still greater one. than two, though. It all adds up. Now, Liz, being around the game today at Indiana University, is there a player that you've watched and seen over the years that would compare it all to Liz Sherwood and what she was like to go against? I'm sure. I mean, we see plenty of bigs in our league and, uh, you know, the rest of the Power Five. But um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I see tons of bigs like that all the time. More mobile than her probably, though, if I'm being honest with you. And Laura watching from the sidelines here up nine inside of five minutes to play in that first half was, was there that anxiousness to just kind of get to the locker room, have this lead? Well, yes and no. Um, the thing that I love most about this group was just the confidence. Um, and from top to bottom, like we just knew that we could play and um, everyone accepted their role. I think that's what made us such a good team is that we all supported each other in those roles. And so for me, it was more just like to pinch myself, like, was this really happening? It's like, we always knew that we could do it. Um, and here we are with a, a big lead against a two seed. I'm heading into halftime, but the confidence, at least for me, like never wavered. I don't think with any of us, it, it ever wavered. Um, we all just knew our roles and everyone supported each other in those roles and wanted to do, to do their jobs. And I just, it seems like every game, I just felt like we were going to go in and we were going to win. There's like, no matter who it was, we had the scouting report. We were prepared really well. Everyone was going to do their job and um, we were all going to support each other and love each other through it. And yeah, that, that's why I love being a part of this team. Just the, the family feeling and the confidence. Kurt, inside of four minutes to play here in the first half, you talk about four minute segments again. What did you have to keep going in order to keep this lead and go into the locker room with what ended up being a double digit lead? You know, Brad, I thought we had the pace the way we wanted it. We were scoring efficiently against their defense, but what was underrated was our defense. Uh, we were just having a lot of right things go defensively. So if you just keep your turnovers low and make them work for everything, not help their offense try to get on track. We had a lot of the momentum at this point in the game. And Kate, just as I asked Kurt about that question, you drop a dime there to Amber Flynn. She bailed me out because the trees were coming and it was closing <laughs> in quickly. Um, but, you know, that's that's what happens when you've got so many people around you that can make baskets too. You know, things like that open up because they need to spread out and cover on the perimeter. So um, you've got to pick and choose, pick your poison essentially. 37-24 going into the locker room. Amber Flynn, big first half, 11 of Bowling Green's last 15 points. Megan, I ask you this. What was that locker room like going up double digits after 20 minutes? I mean, you, you never let – he coach always taught us you never let up. You always keep driving. You keep – pushing forward you know that's always been the halftime talks no matter how much you're up by or if you're not up you never let up by any means and I'm sure if I remember every half I don't remember every halftime talk at all to begin with but that was usually the main focus of this conversation like we're right there we need to keep pushing and keep driving if we don't let them give them any ground yeah we always had to win that next four minutes out of halftime I remember every halftime, I was like, we got this next four minutes are crucial. It's always the one out of halftime. Yeah. You saw a familiar face there in the crowd just before they went to the halftime highlights with Casey McDowell. Could Casey have put on a uniform at that time and jumped in, been ready to play in this game? Of course. I don't think we ever felt after. like she wasn't part of the team, even after her and Jill were gone. They were still always around, and it was always fun to see them. 
I mean, maybe not with her pregame tailgate that day, but I mean, if we would have given her time, she probably would have been fine. Yeah. Big and one there for Vanderbilt, getting it down to a single-digit deficit, chance at a three-point play. How tough was this to guard? I mean, for a lot of teams, this would be tough to guard. I wasn't the best defender by any means, and watching this as – as I used to coach too, and I'm like, oh God, get down in a stance. Wear your arms. We're like, what off? Oh, just awful. Just makes me sick. <laughs> and of course, they had to show a replay there, right? And I'm pretty sure I'm not on the court anymore. Goldsberry came in for me. Well, on a big moment right here, we talk about. Lindsay coming right off the bench, having an immediate impact, get the feed off the three right there. How big was that three at the time just to get it back to a double-digit double deficit? Obviously, Brad, the bench was huge all night. Amber with a big game. Lindsay always brought so much energy, one of the best defenders ever in the MAC. So, And I'll still argue to this day, and I don't follow the MAC quite as quickly, closely but if there was a better six man than amber flynn in the history of the league I, I, I want i want to know about it now lindsey you had something to say there about the three afterwards your mic muted there it is sorry i'm having trouble seeing the screen i don't know something went wrong so i <laughs> i don't have a comment right now <laughs> Sorry. Up 11 points, five minutes gone by, second half. Nice quick move inside, couldn't quite get it to go. Yeah, and this is part of the that game of runs that we talk about. But I, I still feel like, you know, it's it just is going to take one one big shot or, or one play here to kind of settle us down. Deep into the shot clock. Ended up getting a quality look there, Kate. Yeah, I, it was like hot potato between Amber and I for a second, but we ended up manufacturing something late in the shot clock. So I don't know if that was a deep breath, but it was certainly like a sigh of relief that we actually connected. Just want to commend Liz on her post defense. Like with Sherwood being 6'8", she's doing her best to force her to catch it way off the block. And that's a lot of human to be forcing so Liz was doing a great job I don't know how tall she was but I think I go up to her shoulders I think they we're listed keep her giving at six her inches four. six four they listed her I, I thought, thought Carla she was Thomas foot. was like six four but we're good yeah I thought she Carla was Carla Thomas six, was so physical that's, in my mind that's where it's at Goldsberry did you just fall down terrible shot probably <laughs> you had those knee pads <laughs> so I had them I fell a lot <laughs> Now, a lot of emotions in this game. Allie, you always played with emotion. Was was there any back and forth between any players on the Vanderbilt side where by the end of the night you were just like, I'm glad to see you go? I mean, at this point in the in the tournament, you're glad to see everybody go. Right, right. Um, but, no, there wasn't, you know, for us, there wasn't a lot of back and forth with the other team. There was a lot of emotion that we showed like with each other. And, and there was a, a mental aspect of that 
where, you know, we would get so hyped up for each other and, you know, say little things like Karin gets an and one and, and we're walking to this free throw line, like Karin, no one can guard you on that team. And you just, you say these little things that just the other team hears it. It's not necessarily I'm trash talking to the team, but, but they're hearing it and they've got to think about it. And they know inside too, that they can't guard Karin. <laughs> so it's uh it's just a little mental warfare and, you know, part of the passion that's easy to play with when you've got all the energy surrounding you and then just loving the game of basketball. Like I, I would get more excited probably for an and one from my teammates, but there was nothing. I don't think there's any team in the universe that played with as much passion as we played with. A and great dish inside there. How about that position? Amber I Flynn. Yeah, I think I actually had to spin that to get it to her because the angle wasn't very good. It's almost like we did that in practice every single every day. day. Weird, I think we did. <laughs> Kurt likes to say, master the monotony, people. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> oh, boy, Kate. We have no 10 seconds back then, right? I was like, get it over. What are we doing? <laughs> oh, boy, Kate. Can we also just talk about the long baggy shorts compared to the short shorts that are back today? Because right? the shorts look huge. <laughs> what is up with those shorts today? I'm agree. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, seeing some players today, they roll them up. It almost looks like a diaper a little bit. <laughs> Vanderbilt had to be feeling pretty good at this time. Only down seven with, well, two minutes to go here. But Worth, I mean, she had battled foul trouble in that first half. Never really got comfortable. This was yeah, the longest two minutes of my benefit. coaching career. <laughs> okay, you looked a little winded there. <laughs> no Did subs, you Liz. Them? Team no sub. No sub. Seven straight games, Team something no. like that. This was only yeah, I was the cramping sixth straight so bad. game, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, true, yeah, true. Right. What am I doing? This is not the play, Kate. <laughs> mm. Still not the play. Don't panic. We're good. I am running side to side right now. I don't know what is happening. <laughs> a lot of question here. Allie, get that time out. You don't I have like a wide receiver around that book now, Kate. Okay. <laughs> Two feet. Say that one more time. On the sideline, <laughs> ball in my hand. I looked right at the ref and said, "Time out. You got to give it to me." <laughs> <laughs> the look on your face, I love it. I think she was mad at me for making you run that far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure this is the press breaker we worked on all year. No. <laughs> ever, ever. I think it was just try and go get the ball and. Okay. Oh. Okay. Got it. Can we edit this part out so my current players don't see this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Allie. Beast mode. Allie, we still got a big bucket coming here, don't we? Yeah, we have thumb we down. Do. It's about the one play call I remember. Thumb yeah, down. We ran down. This they is, left you open. They left me it's wide open. This is one wide. of my favorite plays, <laughs> and we ran it all the time. Got it. That. Let's Ooh, go. How deep that was. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Why not? Let it fly. Let it fly. Why not? When you're that, when you're that open. <laughs> wide open. <laughs> Man. There's nothing like that feeling right there in the in the whole world. And you still had 48 seconds left, Kurt. 
Looking at it again here. I can still remember is, telling Allie oh, she's okay. got it when she was coming up the lane line and how they defended it before she even caught it. I told her she got it. Yep, I heard it. I heard Kurt's voice in my ear, just like got it, and it was like <laughs> so. As I'm coming up, it was square in her shoulders and let it fly. And Liz set a great down screen. They had no. They all both went to Liz on it. There's the oh, block out. out. Rebound. Uh, I got you. There's oh, Liz yeah. those arms. <laughs> and then the run. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you told us to do that. Down <laughs> and huddle at the other end. <laughs> oh, man. It's good to see Diane on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now we get to that that look over to the sidelines here after that first free throw. We did we didn't see yeah, it, Liz's missed foul shots either, did hey, we? Yeah, I got I got iced by the electrical outage on the shot clock. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That was unfortunate. That was... We missed we missed some important possessions right there, thankfully. <laughs> you actually could have walked to the to the other end. I know, we had plenty of time, like five minutes later. There we go. And they still score. Have you guys gotten stylus since this time, or <laughs> <laughs> bit of? They wear t-shirts on the side. You both look younger now, <laughs> so keep doing it. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> is that that's the back of Randall's head? Uh -huh. And then is that Heather? Was Heather our trainer? Was that our trainer? Oh, yeah, Heather. Heather yeah. Gibber. How do you Gibber on the right oh side. Oh my god. Gibber's are there too. What's Gibber doing now? Sorry. She's a Gibber's teacher. Gibber's married and has kids. Yeah. yeah. Like 17 kids, I feel like. No. No. Super mom. It's three, I think. <laughs> <laughs> she was awesome. Two possession game first. Yeah. One more free throw there. Extend it. How about a quick answer here from Vanderbilt? Ooh. Less than ideal. Oh, whoops. Oh, oh, sorry, guys. They didn't lock okay. and trail on that stagger mm -hmm. screen. Was that you, Goldsy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were going to cut that out, too. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's it. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> <Ryan>. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh my god. I was like, no, no. Like all we want to do is you I need somebody. Should we back that up and re and replay that one more time? That yes. that stop in yes. there. Slow mo no. if you can. Sick. You can sure. all do it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put a shirt on and then you can and now here comes oh, the look. <laughs> Isn't he yells at me to miss it, and I'm so <laughs> mad at my people. I don't know. Miss it. That was miss the classic face. I know, but I couldn't. I couldn't. Oh my gosh, that's too good. <laughs> oh my god, don't foul her. Here it is. Okay. There it hey. is. <clears throat> oh, Kev. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> No. Hey, right, no. <laughs> Man, that was first uh, time. That was pretty cool. The first time ever beating an SEC program. Go to the Sweet 16, first MAC team to ever do that. Kate, how do you look at that now, given that you're seeing teams like, especially in recent years, uh, Buffalo and Central Michigan finding their way with success in the NCAA tournament? Well, you're thrilled. You're thrilled for them because you know what that feeling is. And, you know, I don't think any of us played the game with the intention to carve a path for anybody else. But I do think that we helped rise or raise the level of competition within the Mac and everybody else had to catch up. And then once that started to happen, you know, the Mac just kept getting better and better and better. And, you know, now it's it's a tremendous league. Uh, it's in the top 10 in the country with how good it is. And, um, you know, I feel pretty fortunate that we were just part of it enough to create some history and be the first to do it, uh, but not the last. And so you just, 
you share in the joy of what that feeling was and you hope that they're having these Zoom meetings with their teammates and they feel as strongly about each other as, as we all do today. What moments do you all remember from the locker room afterwards and the comments from coach and just the emotions? Our locker room was a, a place of happiness, like the majority of the time, like we were always celebrating in the locker rooms. Um, and it's, it's nothing like being in there with your sisters. The, it was a sacred place, you know, it was a place that no one else was allowed into. It was, it was super intimate and just your team. And so all the things that we experienced together in that place was just us. And there's something really cool about that. Like it, it was incredible. I mean, to sweet, to say sweet 16 and just have water, like dousing everybody in the face and, um, you know, hugging each other and just excited to be in the moment together. There was nothing like it. Yeah. I remember that locker room being about the size of a large closet. Like it was a very, that locker room was very small. We were all standing up on the, um, like the bench part, like waiting for a coach to come in. Everybody had their water and it was just, it was very wet in there after the game. (laughs) Was there a rush at all just to get out, see your family and friends that had been there and all the support that was waiting by the bus? Yeah, I think that was one of the best parts. And, you know, in the NCAA tournament, they hold you for media and you don't get to rush back out like you typically would for a home game, you know, where we would congregate on the floor. Um, But the best part was when we walked up, it felt like we walked up the ramp. I don't remember if we actually did that or not, but it was lined with fans, friends and family that stuck around um, to, to talk to us after the game and to congratulate us. And, and I, I'll never forget that, but my sister, uh, Bubba, she tells me that that's one of her fondest memories too, because they ended up getting back, I think to, to their homes at like, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning. And she was like, I was never, I never wanted to go to school, but I was never more excited to go to school the next day to tell everybody where I was the night before. So, um, you know, I think that speaks to the community, the sense of community that we had, not just, you know, the family atmosphere we had in our locker room, but, you know, everybody that supported our program felt that too. And when you come back for games today, how many people walk up to you and say, I was at that game still, uh, and just bring you back to it every time they see you? It's pretty cool to post like the memories from Facebook, like, hey, 10 years ago today, 20 years ago today, and you post stuff about that sweet 16 game into the people that comment on it are just these people that are like crawling out of the woodwork from your past that is like if you if we saw them today, like if I ran into a Matt Haycook today or something, there would be nothing but love for everyone. You know, Brad, Brandy and I just had two super fans that were so important to us during our time at Bowling Green come to a game this week in this past week in Connecticut. You know, we haven't coached a game in almost in almost 10 years in Bowling Green. And we still have fans traveling out to see us traveling to see, um, you know, teams that I'm still coaching. It's it's pretty remarkable what the fan base was like. There was nothing like that night when we got back into town. It's memories that all of us will always remember that night arriving back in the Bowling Green. And we were just blessed with an incredible fan base. And, you know, to this day, they still follow so many of us. Lindsay, does it feel like that was 14 years ago? (laughs) No, it doesn't. I mean, that's like something yes, my wedding, yes, the birth of my children, yes, like those, but this is always, like, it's just up, I don't, it's just the whole experience about it, you know, just because, yeah, it's just hard to, like I said, it was emotional, and like, um, uh, everyone was mentioning, you see somebody, and it just brings back memories, or when you do see the other teams, you know, winning, and going to the, you know, NCAA, and going further, it's just, it just brings back those same memories for you, and And like coach was talking about the fan base, you know, I have um, some friends coming tomorrow to come, you know, come visit that I haven't seen them in a little while, but they're coming to visit. And that's what it's a, and that's what it's about too. And like coach, there's just something about that community, the team and outside of our team too, but that supported us throughout those years we were there. Of course, the game that you'll never forget, but I'd like to get a thought from each one of you just on that entire 2006, 2007 season. 
biggest thing that you remember from that any certain point during that season not just that game but you look back on I'll never forget that moment we'll start uh, with Liz I think just what I remember the most is not wanting it to end um, just you know there was a limited number of games left in the regular season and I was driving home from I think like a chiropractor or something in Toledo back to Bowling Green and I was like I just don't want this to ever end and so that we were able to continue to play as long as we did making it to the sweet 16 was just a uh, cherry on the top. And I know I thought we might end our careers in Cleveland, but we fell a little short of that at the final four, but uh, it just, that's what I remember the most, just wanting it to go on forever. Tara, what do you remember? I would say my biggest memory of that season would be the competitiveness and the work ethic of everyone on the team. I think, I mean, as years passed and, you know, they all left and we continued to play, we had obviously outstanding people, outstanding teams, but the energy and the competitiveness was never as great as that group of people. Like, I mean, I think Karn punched someone, like <laughs> I think Karn punched golds one day at practice. Um, it was just one of those things that like you get that heat, everyone's rushing, everyone helping each other up or fist bumping. We're working hard in the weight room. We're just all in all the time and just that type of emotion. I feel like this group of players just had times to the tens that I just haven't seen. So I think my favorite part was being able to be a part of that and having that drive everything that we continue to do in the program. Megan, how about for you? I would agree hundred percent with Tara. Um, and like, I never forget what everyone we put like through the teams I've played with and the teams I've coached with, like everyone, it always comes back to my senior year with that group of girls doing something that no one ever thought we were going to be able to do. And, but believing from the moment we stepped on that floor that we could do anything like we knew, I think when we played Duke, they were ranked number two, maybe, and, or two or four. And we walked on that floor in Cancun, like we're going to beat them no matter what we always had. I don't know if you call it swagger or just confidence. Like it was, game time all the time we always put in the work we always we wanted to work we wanted to be better we like there was never we never second guessed that we were going to show up every day I guess and it wasn't about the wins or the losses or anything it was always just we were happy to be around each other we wanted to play hard for each other and work hard for each other and it, it was just an amazing feeling that I've never had with any other team or anyone else, any other group of people. Julie, what do you remember about that team? Sorry. Um, yeah, so I just expound upon that concept. I had a very different situation, um, but what I remember and take away from this team and this experience was just that genuine feeling that everyone wanted each other to win. And um, that is what this team, that's, that's why I'm here today. You know, I felt like we're all asking about each other's children, what we're doing now, our successes now, what have we gone on to do? And so much of that has come because of the confidence from sports and because of the the things we had to deal with at different, um, you know, situations. And it's what has made us, you know, successful in what we're doing today. What I take away though, so much from our team that year, no matter your situation, whether you were the K-Doctors, the Liz's, the Allies, I just, everyone was their own. I don't think anyone was a bigger cheerleader for me than, than, you know, Allie. I remember her texting me when I was in New York City two years later, like trying to get into med school. And she's like, you got this. Like you're the, we all had each other's back in the biggest way. And we really wanted each other to win together and personally. And um, it was just a very, it was, it was like a family. It was just a very special serendipitous type of 
situation. And yeah, I don't know if many of us will experience that again throughout our life. Um, so that's, that's what, that's what I uh, remember the most. Laura, from the start of that season and how it ended, your biggest takeaway and the impact it has on you today? Um, well, just being a part of something so amazing was such great competitive people, but also, as it's been said over and over, very caring people. Um, uh, I obviously didn't play very much as a freshman, um, but I never felt like I was not important on that team. Um, and everyone still continues to love every member of that team today. And I just remember um, walking in as a freshman and like learning from those seniors that this is how a team functions. This is how a team operates. And um, this is how we run the ship and you're going to get on the ship with us. And you're going to do it this way um, and come along for the ride. Um, so I did my best in practices to work hard and to push them. Um, but ultimately they were the ones that made it happen for us and just having confidence in them every, every day. Um, and it's just something that I wish everyone could experience. And um, as a coach, I want my players to experience that too. But Coach Miller did a great job of cultivating that locker room culture uh, and so that everyone could feel like they were important um, and all the pieces fit together. And I just wish that everyone could experience that uh, as well. It was like Goldsboro said, just speechless. It was a, such a wonderful experience to be able to, to be participating in. Yeah, Lindsay, at the time you win that game, you were only a sophomore. How did that impact the next two years and what you did in the Falcons uniform? Well, I did the best I could to follow up with all of that. But, I mean, you had a great core team right there and the people that became that came before, you know, that senior class too that helped set the stage. But like everyone said, it's just something, you know, about that, that team, this team here. And everyone was different. I mean, everyone had their own who they were. And everyone accepted them for who they were. You know, I mean, that no one, it was, it was just a special, special bond that we all hold. And I think then leaving, it's like you look for that in your life now. And, and you're just so thankful that you've been able to experience and that you still have that core group of girls that you were able to go through an uh, important part of your life with and know that and value that going into the real world. But, I mean, everyone just put it all out there already. It's, it's, just, it's the team. It's just special. And Kate and Allie and Liz, I want you to each speak on this. How you want to be remembered by the players that continue to come through that Bowling Green program today and what you accomplished. I mean, it's it's in the Hall of Fame there in the front now. When everyone walks in, they can see what you accomplished and look at the players that helped build the success that continues on here today. How do you want that team to be remembered, Kate? I, I want to be remembered the same way we thought of all those teams who hung banners before us. You know, like they paved the way and they built history that we were able to chase. And I want every team that comes after us that wears that brown and orange to feel like they can do it too. And I, I want them to be our success because if they do, I know they're going to have as much fun and they're going to enjoy themselves while they do it. And, you know, the hope is that they find such wonderful people to do it with and have such wonderful teammates that set the expectations for everybody else that you interact with in your life and every, you know, other relationship or teamwork setting that you have. Um, but I, I want them to have what we have. And, and I just feel really blessed that we had great teams that came before us and Kurt was smart enough to push us to follow up that success and say, you know, like we're the next crew that does it. Now, Allie and Liz, before we get to you, can we say hello to our newest viewer there hanging out with Julie? She's got her rings on. I see them. Hold on. Put your rings on. She has very expensive rings on. This is Miss Ivy. <laughs> Those are beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Kurt. Future baller right here. My husband, 6'3". <laughs> and Allie, Allie, what do you remember most about that season? Something you're never going to forget. I mean, it obviously had to come to an end at some point. But looking back on it now, biggest takeaway, biggest memory? 
Um, I mean, everyone has said it to some extent, but it was a, a special locker room. I, I honestly would say this, that I don't know of any, what, whether you played for UConn or Tennessee, like I would put our locker room up against any team in the country. It was, it was that special. And to feel supported like that day in and day out um, and co compete, like we, we found ways we loved each other, but when we stepped on the court, it was like, I didn't, I don't care who we are or if we're going to go, you know, have coffee later. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I'm going to beat your butt. Coffee, and, huh? Coffee? Yeah, coffee. At, at time, okay, uh, cool. Yeah. Censorship. Uh, so, but it was, uh, every time we stepped on the court, it was, it was go time and we cared about winning and we cared about doing it together and, and doing it the right way. And a couple of the highlights of that year um, that I'll just never forget. One is our last game in Anderson arena uh, on senior night. And we just put the absolute beat down. I, I think it was Miami of Ohio. They got us after uh, OU at home. And uh, we just, I mean, so, sorry that anyone had to play us, but it was pretty fun to do it to Miami. Um, and walking off the court, getting subbed out at the end of that game with Liz and the crowd just going crazy. And, uh, you know, Liz and I had, had been holding it down at, at the post and had been, you know, roommates and, and just kind of together from the very start had a really cool uh, bond. And for that to where we started, like, <laughs> Hi, I'm Liz. I'm from Indiana. That's how it started. And uh, it, it went on to like walking off the court, kind of our, our final bow in Anderson to the most spectacular audience that we could have done it with. That was a really incredible moment. Um, obviously, the, that Sweet 16 game that we just watched was the, the highlight of that whole year. Um, and, and honestly, I, I'll never forget uh, the last game of the season, too. And I will, you know, for as incredible as that locker room was um, after the Sweet 16 game, when we lost down in Greensboro, that, that locker room, it was incredible in its own way. Uh, there, we shared a moment there that was just like so deep and so raw and something that we never wanted to end. Like, and everyone felt it from, from top to bottom, people who, who didn't play. I mean, Julie Gompers was like at the end of the bench cheering us on all year. And she's in that locker room, just like devastated that this thing is over. Um, and it, it was something just incredible and a bond that I will forever share with all these people on the call, the people that, that aren't on here tonight, um, you know, Karen and Whitney, um, and, and the Casey and, and Jill, like all, all of us that would have been together and built the thing up um, from the ground. I mean, that was the, it was the culmination of all these things that we had put in for four years. And uh, it, there's, there really is nothing like it. And it's something that I will, it's the reason I still coach is because I want to, I want to show players what basketball can, can feel like, because it was, it gave us uh, an environment to like build this thing that was stronger than anything I've ever been a part of. And um, it's, it would dry, it's what drives me still today is teaching kids how to do it the right way, teaching them how to do it together, having championship locker rooms, being, I'm, I'm competitive, so I wanna win too, but at the heart of it all, it's like just having that fortitude and being there and supporting each other and building those connections that last a lifetime. And Brandy, you're hearing from all the former players here, what can you say about the ride of that 2006-2007 season? Um, I mean, they, they keep talking about never wanting it to end. And that's, I, I'll, I'll never forget walking out of that last locker room. And it was just absolutely devastating. Like they were all like, gosh, it makes me emotional now. Like they were all just bawling. And as a coach to see this group of women that have, that had come together and were so close and cared so much about each other, like in tears, like, I, I, I don't know how long they stayed in that locker room. You know, we walked, walked out and we're all in tears ourselves just from watching them not, not even want to leave. You know, they're all in a crying heap in that locker room together. Um, it was just, it was just really special. And I think for us as coaches, like that senior class that came through together, 
they really set the tone for the underclassmen moving forward because we didn't we didn't have to teach the culture from there on out like it it was already instilled because of that senior class and then kate and laura tara goldie all those underclassmen took it and ran with it because they knew what was expected they knew how to work they knew what was going to piss coach miller off in a hurry you know and they could help teach that to the new people coming in and and so for us, that group just set the tone for the expectations that we had for each other and for ourselves, um, you know, was to hang banners and it wasn't easy, it, it, you know, and there was a lot of hard work. And I know some of the young people that came in thought, oh, I'm going to Bowling Green, I'm going to hang banners. But no, they had to learn that you had to come in and work for it every day. Um, and so it was just super special. And, you know, so many of us are like, we're still coaching and you just, you know, I tell myself all the time to to live in the moment because they're so few and far between and fleeting those, those moments of high where you win and you know you're living a special moment and a special time. And those are just so few and far between. So, um, you know, that, yeah, these women are phenomenal. And just to see, I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that they were all gonna go on to be the successful women that they are today right now on this call. And I'm just so happy that everybody is thriving and doing well and happy and successful and having beautiful babies. <laughs> just makes my heart happy. And Kurt, Brandy touched on it there. Uh, at the time for you, that was uh, year number six at Bowling Green. Can you speak on just the success of that season and the impact it had on you and the players coming in going forward for the next five years that you were at Bowling Green? Yeah, that class, obviously, Brad, set the tone for my entire career. Um, and when you look back on it, it, it was a class that took a chance on us, took a chance on Bowling Green when we hadn't established um, any culture at that point. Um, we inherited a program that had hit the skids um, and they took a chance. It was our second recruiting class and it was, they were signing before we had even started our second year. Um, and it was a, it was a class with the exception of Megan, um, who Megan was a huge get for us, but everybody else was under recruited and, um, underappreciated and we put together this class of seven ultimately six stayed the whole time that formed the foundation of what our entire era was about and uh, it was just an amazing um, that class set the tone for classes behind it and it obviously set the tone for success um, and it, it was just a remarkable run and you remember the sweet 16 but you know, I have a unique perspective of our, our last game and with Arizona State and best player was out. You know, we we honestly walked out there and go, we're, we're going to go. We're, we're going to win this game and go to the Elite Eight. And then we're going to get Duke or Rutgers again. And we're going to Cleveland. You know, there was ultimately that feeling that we were we were going to be a final four team. So, um, you know, devastating when we lost the hugs from that senior class coming off the floor for the last time is something I'll never forget. And ironically, the star player that didn't play for Arizona state that night is now currently playing for Brandy and I. So don't, don't you think that I don't think every single day that I could still be coaching one of these guys because I'm coaching uh, still a person that these guys played against in their last game and uh was on that team that we, you know, were taking care of. So every single day, I think what it would be like if I was still coaching one of these guys, uh, that's how much I enjoyed it. But it was just a special time. They're incredible people, more importantly than basketball players, but it, it was everybody. I mean, still to this day, we have a blank screen there, but there's not a better SID than Mike Sheehan, uh, media relations director. Uh, amazing that he's still there. There we go. His haircut's still the same. Um, and then, and then our staff and our staff just, uh, just complimented each other so much. You know, we had mother Jennifer Roos that took care of everybody with Brandy, who was kind of the mini me and, and, uh, did such a great job of echoing all of everything. And then, you know, we, Kevin had his special bond and way with players. It just, I was fortunate to be surrounded by a staff that were incredible humans and, um, allowed us to coach them hard 
you know, that for me, I found a group that allowed me to coach hard early in my career. And I'm still coaching to this day because of this group right here. I'd like to thank everyone for taking time here on their Friday night to look back on this BGSU Classic, the second round of the 2007 NCAA tournament. Number seven seed, Bowling Green defeating number two seed, Vanderbilt, and advancing to the Sweet 16, the first MAC team to ever do that. Thank you all for your time.